contracts. And I remember he came to mind, and I'm like, well, we still haven't worked out all the details. There's a lot of things I'm not happy with. I'm still not signing this thing. I don't remember the duration of it, but it was probably a year. Yeah, Paul was just, you know, paranoid at that point. That WCW was out to get us, and it was war. Cool. He had to unite and be a team. <laughs> and uh, so he had forced me to sign a 30-day contract at that show. I think Mike was either staying in a hotel across the street or just sitting in a car across the street with Doug Dillinger, the uh, head of WCW security. So Paul had given this big, huge pep talk, this is what's going to go down. He's just going to walk into this building, he's going to do this match, and he's leaving. And, and so it was a big, huge thing. And it was pretty cool that, you know, Taz was coming back for it. So it really was heat with uh, Eddie, Chris, and Dean from a Japan tour that he had gotten hurt and or went home or sold more than they shot, thought he should have. That he had a, a rep for not really being as tough and uh, give it all to the business as he should have been on a Japan tour once. I had always heard that that sort of was just, you know, a, a, a few detractors that he had where he went to a lot of places and guys who you would normally hope to have your back didn't because of that. So I think that may have played into Jerry's uh, slip into the quagmire in a lot of companies that he was in. Yeah. He had to kayfabe as best possible. Like they even snuck me into the office through a back door. Huh. Um, so no one would see me, so the story wouldn't get out. Again, I didn't get any of my nightly incentives because I didn't have any shows, but I yeah. still made somewhere in the neighborhood of like $21,000 and I never left my house. Wow. So I was like, that was a good first impression <laughs> of WCW. I got this $20,000 plus thousand dollar check for my my first month in the company, and it's like I didn't have to leave my house. I didn't go to work. Wow. It didn't bounce. <laughs> the possible exception of WWE, um, I think every place I've ever gone, People take a while to warm up to me. Because um, I am fairly quiet and shy when I first meet people, or if I'm in a situation I don't don't feel perfectly comfortable. So I tend to keep to myself. And I think a lot of people take that for arrogance, mm -hmm. where they were sort of not thrilled with DDP's work. Yeah. And I think we're getting to turn babyface. He had worked with me and Christian a couple of times and had good matches. Um, so she was just like, oh, so great to see you. Thank you for working with Payne. Bro. She was super nice and Chris was like, man, she's really nice. I'm like, yeah, I said, I was in WCW with her for 10 months, and I don't think she even looked at me. Uh, um, I was actually, uh, it was Johnny Ace and I were the first two on the scene to break up the Diamond Dallas Page Scott Steiner fight. I just got mad and said that he was going to, you know, fire all the wrestlers and just hire actors and teach them how to work. <laughs> the, act, the wrestlers weren't good enough actors, and I'm like, ooh, good luck with that. Yeah. I was a big Dynamite kid, Bret Hart, Randy Savage fan. You know, he was phenomenal, and then when I got to Stampede here in Calgary, you know, I was, oh, you need to see his Dynamite Kid Tiger Mask stuff, so I got a Japanese tape of Dynamite Tiger Mask. So Dynamite was just awesome, I was a huge fan. Yeah. Um, and then everything I've seen from the person level, he was just a miserable bastard. Um, very few stories of him being a uh, particularly nice person. There's constantly really people getting into fights. And then in the, uh, the CNN interview he did, uh, post Chris Benoit, tragic where he you know, admitted putting a shotgun to his wife's head and saying that that wasn't mean or violent because there wasn't shells in it. Um, he wouldn't have been a person I liked at all, so I, I'm, I'm glad I never Bill just had a, an intensity and, and, you know, didn't have a, a, a volume control on it. But that's, that's why I got over. Um, as much as he, you know, ran over me like a truck when he hit me with his spear and, and everything else, he never hurt me with Jericho. It was really cool that way. And that, and I just loved working with the guy. It's always more fun working with somebody you know, you like, you like working with, you gel with. Um, so that was always really cool, the fact that we had to, got to have a couple of single matches and tag matches. And, and a few names were named. Mark was, I know Lance Cade brought up Bubba as, as a guy who tended to be harder on young guys brought up. A few other names would have been brought up. Mark mentioned a few things, and I think at one point, I had mentioned that you know, the three people you really needed to watch out for were Bob Holly, Billy Gunn, and Bradshaw. As long as you don't piss those guys off, life can be okay. You know, when Jimmy starts slapping the shit out of this kid and screaming at him, it's like, I felt like I should step in and like try to calm him down, but it's like, this is an OVW guy in an OVW building, and Jim Cornette's an OVW owner. I'm a WB guy that has nothing to do with this. And so instead of sitting there, this is really crossing the line. This is a bit much, but it's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And I don't want to do the 
Honky Tonk Man host show match. Yeah. Um, and then doing the hard, good quality match that you're proud of against Joe Perkin. So I'm probably done. <laughs>